It's the last day of this trading week and time for our weekly wrap up. I'm Jessica Walker and today I'm joined by Brian Lawson, Global Economics Consultant at IHS. So Brian, China's stock markets post the biggest monthly loss in six years. How much fallout do you expect from China's stock market volatility? We actually think that the, the direct impact of the stock market correction on China's real economy is fairly limited. Stocks only account for between 6 and 12 percent of household assets, and that therefore limits the impact on consumption demand. A much higher figure, nearer 30 percent, for example, applies in the United States. The corporate use of the stock market is also pretty marginal. It was only 2.7 percent of total social financing in 2014 and 4.8 percent in the first half of 2015. So the stock market is not really the main source of money for companies that wish to expand. However, we do see negatives from the recent developments. In particular, the financial services sector will be a drag on the real economy. That only accounts for 6% of GDP. Overall, we think the jury is out as to whether or not China can avert a full-scale crisis, a major financial crisis. But it has a fighting chance of doing so because it has a closed capital account and effectively is running a state-controlled intermediation system. Nevertheless, in the longer term, what has been going on in the last month is a negative in respect of the prospect of economic reforms. And in turn, that is a dampener on the potential longer term growth outlook for China itself. And there is also fallout elsewhere in the world in particular in the emerging market economies, whose stock markets have been the worst performer over the last month. The basic concern is that Chinese growth, barely keeping to a 7% level at the moment, is likely, at least at the margin, to weaken further. And that, in turn, makes it very difficult for commodity prices to recover. The longer that the commodity markets stay weak, the more than major natural resource producers are going to come under both fiscal and external pressure leading them to take austerity measures, leading them to borrow more, and overall uh, offering lower growth prospects in a number of emerging markets which had previously performed pretty strongly. Do you expect Ukraine to default? And how do you view the negotiations so far? The renegotiation of Ukraine's debt is quite a painful process at the moment. The major concern and stumbling block is the 40% capital haircut that the country wishes to impose on its sovereign debt holders, and clearly that would involve large nominal losses for some major leading firms uh, in, the, in the investment industry. However, Ukraine, in our view, is fairly firm on this, because unlike Greece and Jamaica, it really takes the view that it's been through a fundamental change. After all, it's facing war within its territory. It's facing loss of some 20% of its industrial capacity. And its view that it, is that it would be relatively imprudent simply to allow um, d lower coupons and a delay of payment of principal to be the solution in its current negotiations. Now, in the course of this week, there have been some positive signs, in particular with respect to Oshad's bank. And Finance Minister Yereshko did announce on Monday that hopefully there would be a deal on Oshad's bank as early as this Friday, to, i.e. today. However, as with Ukrexin Bank, Oshad's bank is not actually trying to write off principal. It's trying to extend its debt maturities by some seven years or up to seven years uh, with increased interest coupons. And that's obviously a very different exercise from taking a 40% haircut on one's positions. Um, so basically, the positives there and also with Privat Bank moving to a maturity extension to allow for longer negotiations are inherently positive steps, but they don't solve the sovereign problem. Our assessment is that the major hurdle will come in late September, when there is quite a sizable payment by Ukraine, and if a deal isn't in place by then, we think there is still quite a high risk of a moratorium being declared. Ultimately, Ukraine would like to avoid default, but not at the price of a deal which it views as unsustainable in the longer term. And finally, the Federal Reserve has placed further confidence in the US economy, saying that it is on track for a rate rise. Do you think the Fed is correct in being so confident? 
if we look at recent economic indicators in the States, they are all fundamentally pretty healthy. For example, GDP in the second quarter grew by 2.3% at an annual rate. There have also been relatively positive numbers coming out of the housing sector, housing starts, permits, home sales, etc., along with home prices, all posting strong gains in the last month. There's pretty strong expectation that capital spending will rebound in the third quarter, uh, led by investment in uh, commercial and manufacturing structures, information processing, and industrial equipment. Uh, so there are a number of positive elements inherent to where the Fed uh, sees the, the, the real economy at this stage. However, we are not totally sure that the Fed necessarily will move to a September rate hike. We think it's probable, but not by any means certain. Overall, we think that the labor market reforms for July and August will still be very important in actually setting the timeline for the change. And also, if the Chinese situation were to worsen materially, we think the Fed would be likely to wish to keep its options open rather than having a rate hike just at the time of a major financial dislocation in China. We do overall forecast two quarter point increases in rates uh, in the course of 2015 and four increases in 2016. So we do see the Fed moving to a rising rate trend. But when it actually starts the process will still depend on other factors, notably those labour market reports and what happens in China. Well, Brian, thank you for speaking with us today. That's all that we have time for today. But for further updates, keep clicking back. Goodbye for now.